This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. On the show today, you'll find out where book publishing is going and how to take advantage of it. How to identify and avoid publishing predators. What opportunities are emerging as the book trade evolves in new forms. How to avoid losing money and much, much more. Join us now as a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take the author to the next, next level of publishing. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Brought to you by Author You and The Book Shepherd. And now, here's your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. How would you like to have a lot of book sales? Not, not a lot of book sales you know, over the lifetime, which is always very good, but how, you, how would you like to really kickstart it with a real gooser of sales, like a thousand books sold in 30 days or less? Every author dreams of that. And if you know what the stats are, the typical self-published book, here's the life of the book, 100 freaking sales. That's not a lot of books. The lifetime of a New York published book. I'm not talking about the mega people. I'm talking about the regular old plain Jane, traditional published books. They're lucky to sell 5,000 books. That's it. That's it. Lifetime. Lifetime. How would you like to sell 1,000 books in 30 days? That's what today is all about. And with me is Ryan Mendehall, who is bringing 12 years of digital marketing experience in the field to his passion, which is wellness marketing. And that means keeping us alive while we do this. He hosted the 2014 Book Marketing Summit, where 27, and I'm honored to say he included me in that, of the top book marketing experts who have collectively, collectively, between the 27 of us, have sold millions upon millions of books. And we came together to share ideas of how to sell a 1,000 books each within a three-week period of time. So Ryan is the author of the number one international best-selling book, Selling Well, How Wellness Coaches Build an Author Platform that can sell a 1,000 books in 21 days. He uses the principles in an exclusive group success program, which he's going to tell us. He's going to tell us about the summit because he's going to do a replay for all of you listeners. So we'll get that little tidbit toward the end, so hang in here. But we really wanted to jump in and really uh, do a fast forward. You know, as we come to the end of the year, why not do it before 2015 is over? That's the way I look at it. So let's welcome Ryan to the program. Hi, Ryan. Glad to have you on Author You, You Guide to Book Publishing. Hi, dude. It's really good to be here. I'm, I'm glad that you invited me, and I'm glad that you were on the summit last year. I'm excited to talk to you guys. Yeah, we had a great time. We had a great time. All right, so let's just get into, because, you know, you talk about mindsets. And I always believe that having that 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 focus, that myopic, I mean, I'm talking myopic <laughs> as strategy to go forward, is how you're not only going to create it, you're going to kickstart it, and you're going to follow it through. So why don't we just kind of start there? What is it that separated all these successful author entrepreneurs from all the others that you come across? Well, you know, it's it's really interesting because um, when I first began uh, approaching all these book marketing experts, these best-selling authors, to join me in the book marketing summit last year, I had the impression that I was going to be talking to people and they would share with me all these, like, really super secret strategies and, you know, things that only the top 1% knew. And as I started to get into it, I realized that everybody, you know, all these people, like you said, people, all these collective group have sold millions and millions of books. And and they were telling me pretty much the same thing. Uh, um, and that was that these basic things that we often take for granted are – the foundation of selling not just a thousand books in 21 days, but to have a business that, that can sustain itself. You know, you mentioned how many books actually get sold when authors go out and publish their books. And that's, that's really disheartening to me because um, for the most part, when authors go to publish, they have this, this vision and this passion and they have this message they want to share with the world or a story they want to share. And they, 
<laughs> they hit the wall basically. They they find out that um, just writing a good book is not good enough, and um, and a lot of them you know know about say social media or know about uh, email marketing, but they don't know really how to put those pieces together. And that is one of the biggest things that, that I came out of this um, that conference with was that there are five relationships. Um, that these authors were talking about that, that, that got them to sell not just a thousand books in 21 days, but, but, you know, the millions that they have sold. So that is a, that's one of the biggest aha moments for me was that the foundations are what these guys, you know, ride their money on and that's what they do. So, you know, today we'll talk about those five different relationships and I actually put them in my recent book, which is a distillation of that summit, that summit collective wisdom, and it's the five relationships that these guys use to sell a thousand books in 21 days. And those are the mindset, you mentioned the mindset, we'll get into that in just a sec, the message, the marketing, your members, and your money. So those are the things that we'll talk about today, and I'm excited to dive into those and, and get going. And that's what's critical. And you know, you you kicked on something that was really, really important. That that um, a, a lot of books that have sold a gazillion copies, a lot of them are not really great books, but they have amazing marketing and push and enthusiasm from someone, usually the author behind it, that makes it happen. Right. So right. you know. I think so many authors, Ryan, get caught up in uh, the, the, the constant retweaking. I mean, I call it, the, you know, so you, I'm almost afraid to give a book back to an author because now they're going to rewrite the bloody thing again, you know, after we go through the first round of editing. Uh, you know, it's like, oh, my God. Um, and or, or I have a situation where an author came in. I had actually one in tears the other day in my offices who was so paralyzed, he so emotionally paralyzed himself when he got the edited versions of his very short book because he felt that every word that had been altered of his words was a destruction of his baby. And mm-hmm. I tried to explain to Timothy that our job is to make your words look better, to, to make them grow better, to do a connect better, even when we have to sub in. And that... Uh, especially these first-time authors, the old-time authors get it. You know, we we come old right. hands. Yeah. Okay. What do you need to do? Fix it. Fix it. Fix it. Fix it for me. But the it's it's the newbie authors I get that are so entrenched. That's why I've always told them when you get editing back from your editor, whatever it is, you get out your favorite beverage. I don't care if it's coffee, tea, water, scotch. I don't care what it is. <laughs> Get it out and just sit down and read through from cover to cover. And you're going to find that at least 90% of what's being suggested is on target. Yeah. But ego, right. ego, ego, ego. You got to you gotta get it out of the way. You really do. You know, um, I've, I've recently, for the last uh, three or four months, I've been working with a, a fiction publisher and we inevitably you know, send back a lot of revisions and a lot of um, edits to these authors. And uh, I think that that's something in general, not just in your writing, but in your marketing too, that you have to uh, kind of let go of the outcome, if, if we could call it that. That's one of the mindsets that I think authors mm-hmm. should have is that I'm going to put this out there, and even if it's perfect, quote unquote, you know, like if nothing reaches that perfection if you ever think, like you said, there's always the I'm gonna take it back and rewrite it type of um, mentality. But if it was, theoretically, if it was perfect, there's always gonna be somebody out there who doesn't agree with it, who doesn't like the way you said it. And you just have to let that person or those people be those people and, you know, thank them for that. Thank them for for acknowledging your book. I mean if they hadn't said anything that's one thing, but they they took the time to say something about it. And, you know, good press, bad press, it all is press, and you're going to get uh, a lot more mileage from kind of a, a live and let live attitude with your book and your marketing than you are without it. Well, and that is exactly right. So let, let's get into the mindset. You talk about 
um, the relationships and those those distinct those five critical elements as we go through this. So, what are in setting up your mindset? Where what do we do to start off? I mean, how do you recommend authors you know get off the dime to move forward? Okay, so the first relationship is is like you said the mindset. This is the relationship you have with yourself and. Um, you know, some of the things are that some of the relationships that we have with ourselves aren't very healthy. Some of the um, things that we say to ourselves, if we said those to another person out loud, would be considered mm-hmm. offensive, be very um, um, disarming, and it would very like uh, push those people away. So the the relationship we have with ourselves, that mindset that we have, is essentially about getting rid of the negativity. Um, it's about having um, a forgiving relationship with yourself, and it's about um, having correct attitudes towards this book uh, mm-hmm. book marketing process that are going to be um, uh, beneficial and sustaining to you. So I say that there's, these, there's three key insights that I got out of the book marketing summit that if um, you don't have them, you're bound to fail just from the outset. So these are things that came up again and again that these authors were telling me. And the first one of those three insights is to start early to build your audience and promotional partners. So one thing that I see a lot of authors do, and I, I really have been guilty of it myself as well, is to sit in your cave or, yes. you know, it doesn't have to be a cave, but it can be down by the river or wherever yeah. your writing spot is. And, yeah. and just go into that space and, <laughs> and write and write and write and write and then come out and present your polished baby to the world, right? You know, and even if you have, you know, even if you're working with editors and you go through that process and then present to the world, you're still too late because what happens is when you start early to not only, you know, write your book but to share the pieces of it with your audience, you start to build a relationship with them that will serve you so that when you launch your book, you have an audience. You have an audience ready to receive and hear it, and they've gone on the journey with you, so they're going to be a lot more excited, a lot more forgiving, and a lot more um, willing to, they, they understand the process you went through. So um, they essentially become your friends to a point. Uh, well, so not only your friends, they, they're your, they become your cheerleaders too. Um, yeah, but, right, but, but, right. Yeah. It, but but also I need to throw in we're gonna run, we're gonna run into our first break here but one of the things that's really important that a lot of people think their friends are their editors <clears throat> no they're not they're not your editors that's a different animal in the, in the mix um, your friends can give you a feel and feedback but remember your friends are your friends and they love you and you know not all of them are gonna tell you what in the hell were you thinking Harvey. <laughs> so, got to remember that. I think it's really important. All right, let's take a quick break. With us is Ryan Mendenhall. We're really talking about the critical components to being successful to sell not one, not 10, one, not 100, but we're talking a thousand books within just a couple of weeks. This is Judith Bryles. It's Author You, your guide to book publishing. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Many of us have dreamed of writing a book. Some of us even have. Then the hard work starts. You'll need an editor. Who will design the cover or typeset the pages? Who will format the ebook? If you're a business owner, consultant, or coach with a serious message and expertise to share, the team of experts at 1106 Design can guide you through the maze. They've helped more than a thousand authors create top quality books and avoid the not so reputable self publishing companies. Learn more at 1106design.com. Then call Michelle at 602 602- 866-3226-1106-DESIGN. Is there a book in you? Or another, Author You will show you how to create, develop, and publish your book without being hoodwinked. If you already have a book out, you'll find a supportive and brainstorming community that's connected and creative no matter where you live. Author U brings in national experts for its book camps and annual author extravaganza held each May. It has regular meetings and delivers webinars for its members on timely topics. 
through AuthorUse Extensive Network, members enjoy exclusive benefits, including significant discounts for a variety of services necessary to publish. The Resource, its online book publishing news magazine, is content-heavy and it's free. If you want to create a book that has pizzazz, punch, and panache, AuthorU is for you. If you're a hobbyist or a casual author, it's not. Join AuthorU today through its website at AuthorU.org. Follow AuthorU on Twitter at AuthorU and on Facebook at AuthorU, where timely author and publishing tips and articles are posted daily. AuthorU, where the author goes to become seriously successful. First impressions are everything in the world of book publishing. Whether your book is an ebook, a print version, or both, your book cover needs to pop, sizzle, and sparkle to immediately capture the attention of your audience. And your book's interior needs to be just as dynamic and reflect the professionalism your readers demand. Nick Selinger of NZ Graphics has won numerous national and international book awards for his cover designs and interior layouts. With over 20 years of experience in graphic design, he knows what it takes to create award-winning books and the many promotional pieces that authors need, such as posters, banners, postcards, one-sheets, business cards, logos, and more. Visit ncgraphics.com and see what authors and publishers have to say about their award-winning books and how NZ Graphics can make your book the success it was meant to be. That's nzgraphics.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. With us is Ryan Mendenhall. We're talking about how to sell a thousand books in three weeks. Um, and which would be perfect during this time of the year. And he's really talking about the critical components and tying in relationships and the mindset. So, Ryan, I'm going to toss it back to you because we did a quick interrupt as we went to our break. So let's talk about those relationships and how critical they are. Great. Yeah, so the first of the three insights to um, having a mindset that is successful in your book launch process is we mentioned start early to build your audience. And Mm -hmm. not only your audience, but but your promotional partners, the people who are not only going to buy your book when it comes out, but the people who are on board to help share about your book. You know, some of those people will be the same people that buy your book. They will be family and friends who want to just do everything for you. But there are also going to be people who um, have an audience that you would ideally want to speak to as well. You know, they're going to be the people who have an audience that target the target audience of your book. So, when you start to build those relationships, well, I, the, the very foundational thing of all of these relationships we're talking about is that they take time. Relationships take time. Relationship with yourself takes time. You know, it's not easy to make changes uh, uh, personally, just like it's not uh, easy to make relationships just in an instant um, in the real world. So that's the first step. Is The first insight is to have um, uh, to start early building the relationships so that you have things, have people to share with and people to promote mm-hmm. when your book comes out. And the second insight is to take action. Along with building these relationships, taking some sort of small daily action. John Kramer talks about at the beginning of his book, um, A Thousand and One Ways to Sell Your Books. He talks about this rule of five, which is just really simple. It's to commit to five small actions each day that will move your book forward. So that might look like, hey, I'm going to spend an email to interested in being on my launch team. You know, tell them mm-hmm. a little bit about my coming up and, and when I'm expecting to publish it and, and what uh, I, a couple things that I might like them to do when it comes, the date comes. And if I get a yes from that person, I put them on my list. That's one daily small action I can do. Another daily small action I can do is to a group um, of my ideal readers and start to, to network with them. And that might be on Facebook, it might be on LinkedIn, it might be in my in my neighborhood, uh, have, a, have a reading club or something. 
or my mm-hmm. local library. So there's a lot of small actions you can do, but taking action is that second mindset that we really have to get into and get used to. And even though it's uncomfortable, you know, there's that phrase, feel the fear and do it anyway. Like, if you feel fear around something, chances are it's going to be a good thing for you to, well, not always, but you know what I'm saying. Like, in your marketing endeavors, if there's something you're scared to do, then um, go ahead and do it and just see what happens. You know, the worst thing that can happen is probably not uh, the worst thing that's going to happen. So. Well, and and that's really the case, Ryan, because a lot of people always build up all these walls almost um, mm-hmm. and that they really do imagine all these god awful things could happen. And the reality is they, they won't. They won't. Yeah, I think somebody said uh, someone, someone told me to quote recently. I think it was attributed to Mark Twain. And it was something to the fact that like I had a life full of fears, uh, most of which never happened or something like that. <laughs> um, and uh, well, that's really uh, much my case, and I I know that when I just swallow it, and and uh, you know I might tell somebody about the fear, and that kind of helps me walk through it. That really is helpful for me. But then I end up just doing it, and it's always I'm always like, wow, that was not as first, not as hard as I thought it was going to be. And second, I got some really cool relationships out of that, or some really cool benefit from that. So totally, totally. Good. Now, All the, right. third, the third thing in the mindset category that, that seems to come up again and again is just have a plan. You know, like a lot of people hear a lot of things. You're probably listening to this podcast. You probably listen to other Judas's pod, Judas podcasts and, and many other podcasts and sign up for programs. And you've got this whole list of things in your head of things that you need to do. The best thing to do, if you don't have a specific plan from somebody, and you can get you, part of what I do is give plans, and Judith gives plans, and a lot of people give plans. But if you can just take a plan and stick with it, commit with somebody, whether it's a mentor or a group or, you know, your spouse or somebody, and just say, okay, here's the plan I'm committing to. I'm going to try it out, and um, if it's too much, I'm just going to scale back. But I'll still keep to this plan, and I'm going to let you know when I do these things so that I can stay accountable to what I've committed to do. So those are three insights that really, if you don't have them, you're bound to fail before you even begin. So starting early, doing something daily, and, and not just doing something, but doing something on your plan. And they're so simple, but the simplest things really lead to the biggest results. So those are a really good starting place for a mindset, you know, of any author. Um, that is going to succeed in this in this industry. All right. So the and and so what you're talking about to me, having that mindset and and starting putting this card together is and and actually all of these components we're going to be going through during our hour are really part of what I call the infrastructure. And if you don't have all this infrastructure together, that you set yourself up for failure. I mean, that's where I come from in the game. But let's jump into our second point, which is what I harp on all the time is for authors needing to understand, um, you know, what their message is all about and to be able to get it across concisely. So, you know, what, what are you, what's your thoughts about? Because so many times and it does, it boggles my mind, Ryan, when I ask an author, who is their reader? And they get the, you know, the headlight in the eyes, that dear look. Well, everybody, I mean, I had this conversation yesterday morning at an event, and I said, stop right there. Everybody, you are, you are bound to get grounded out here instantly on it. So, you know, jump in and beat me up or tell me what you think here. <laughs> no, I, I agree. That is really one of the hardest things to do because we, the typical scenario is, is somebody has this thought in their head and it comes up something like this, oh, this thing has really helped me out in my life, or, oh, I really love, you know, romance, or I really love this story, and I'm going to write my own version of this story or this thing that helped me out. And um, so in a way, they're starting from a really good place because they already are coming from a place of, writing something that somebody likes and that somebody is them. So it's not hard to go from that place to say, well, what do 
other people like as well. You know, like if I like this, then there's got to be other people that like it. But I need to make sure that I'm not just spinning my wheels and like doing something that only I like. Um, mm-hmm. So the, the 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 point of a good message is really to have a clear picture of who your ideal reader is going to be, or else, you know, it's almost like, I'm just making this up on the fly here, so if it doesn't work out, then <laughs> let's all just laugh together. But oh, well. you've, got, uh, you've got, right, you've got um, a technician who works on space shuttles in Pasadena, California, and and they're trying to talk in their language to um, a, a fourth grade teacher who who sits with kids all day and is teaching, um, I, don't, I don't know, like art. You know, like those are two very different uh, things, and they're two very, you would, you would use different language to talk to both audiences. Um, but if you're, if you're the, um, the, the technician or the, the engineer, and you're speaking your language to somebody who is, is not going to understand what you're saying, then that's kind of a hang-up you can get into if you, you know, with your ideal reader that if you're not careful. So I say that there are, and when I say I say, I mean like all of all of these authors say that three simple ways to get into the mind of your reader are um, if you have a list, just ask them. I mean, it's not hard to, to say, you know, what do you want to know about? Or, hey, I have these three ideas. Which one mm-hmm. is most appealing to you? Or um, those kind of questions, if, if you have uh, the audience in a Facebook group, that's another type of list um, in addition to an email list that you could possibly have. You might go and just start uh, asking them or even messaging them and, and start having that conversation about what they like and what their challenges are, what their struggles are. And those things in the type of messaging that I'm, I'm used to helping market, you know, the wellness message, those are essential to know what people's biggest problems are, what their biggest challenges are, and mm-hmm. what solutions they've mm-hmm. tried and what they're looking for. And uh, knowing those things will, will, will keep you away from trying to give the same solution that 100 people out there tried to give them and, and didn't work for them. So you get a sense of what worked and what didn't. Well, you know, you know, when, you yeah, know let me just add to that. When, when I wrote a book called Gender Traps many, many years ago, I only wrote it based on one question. And actually, 5,000 women responded to my question. 5,000. And then I went to interview them. And, and when I asked the question, it was very open ended and it was something like this. What are, the, what are the three biggest challenges that you're encountering in your workplace today? That was it. That was it, Ryan, and I just listened, and I just listened, and 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 then I came up with the ten traps. I knew that the ninth. I mean, I had been, I had done tons of writing, on uh, on. Uh, uh, I never got into discrimination issues. I, I'm not a writer on that, but I certainly wrote on communication issues and miscommunications and and you know misfire and nails and all that, and and being undermined in the workplace, which is what my doctorate said, and I wrote all over the place on that. But it was the ninth one that came in in the in the ranking. And it was not being sabotaged by someone else. It was being what what I do to self sabotage myself. And I knew, Ryan, that that was a separate book. And I immediately started recopying everything I had from that and moved it into another folder to create the book which became Stop Stabbing Yourself in the Back. And although I never really went out and spoke on it, wherever I was speaking and that book was always on my table, people would come up, they'd look down at all my covers, they'd literally take their finger and point and start tapping on top of that cover, that's me, I need this book. And, you know, so you just never know. But having the magic question, this is that you're saying, when you ask the question and being a really good listener, that means not giving your opinion, listening. Because you know what? Maybe your opinion's wrong. 
um, listening could restructure and reshape your book so closely. All right, we're going to take another quick break uh, today as we come to the bottom of the hour. With us is Ryan Mendenhall. He is uh, huge in book marketing and can do uh, does the book marketing summit. And you want to make sure that you tap into it. We'll tell you as we come to the end of the show how to take advantage of that. But book marketing, being successful, selling a thousand books in twenty one days is possible. We're telling you how. This is Judith Bryles. It's author you your guide to book publishing this is your guide to book publishing everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host dr judith briles and we'll be right back with more great information right after these since 1987 color house graphics has set the standard for quality book production Whether you decide to print a small quantity of books or need a large print run, depend on Color House to help you. You'll receive professional help and advice the moment you reach one of our representatives. If you mention hearing about us on your guide to book publishing, Judith Bryles, we will provide you with discount on the first order you place. To speak with a project manager, call us toll-free at 800-454-1916 or visit us at www.colorhousegraphics.com. When Ned Thompson and Harry Shore started Thompson Shore in 1972, they believed employees with great character would make up the best company. They were right. They hired people who were not only experts in bookmaking, but who were obsessed with quality and delivering exceptional customer service. Almost 40 years later, Thompson Shore remains a 100% employee-owned company. Ned and Harry knew that successful customer projects are a direct result of empowered employees. We specialize in all books for large and small publishers. Creating beautiful and well-made books, we're dedicated to pleasing our customers by making the experience a good one from start to finish. The personal touch we have with our customers allows us to be innovative in solving their most difficult challenges. Our platform also ensures that we can remain flexible to meet our customers' unique needs and expectations. Our marketing kit can create buzz for your title, enhancing the promotion of your book during infancy. When you need to test the market to gauge your future sales, we can provide digitally printed books that will transition seamlessly into a larger offset run. From ebook to hard copy to delivery, our skillful customer service teams are at the ready to answer your most pressing question. At Thompson Shore, we know that making the highest quality books requires more than just best technologies. It requires superior customer service, professionalism to the trade, and commitment to environmental and social values. With these standards of excellence in place, you can be sure that we will always help you put your best book forward. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, If you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All right. Selling those books. A boatload of them. I mean, we're talking cases and cases and cases and cases of books in just a few weeks. Ryan Mendenhall is giving us the formula, mindset, for having to make sure we have that solid message. All right. What's next, Ryan? All right, dude. So, you know, we talked about the, the message. We're into the um, – no, we're still talking about the message. We're talking about the mindset. We're into the message. We talked about if you already have connections with your ideal reader, you can just ask them what their thoughts are. And those that will be, like you said, the foundation of of what your message is going to tell you. Yeah. So it, when you um, are talking to your ideal reader and they're sharing with you their struggles and their challenges in their own words, and you repeat those words back to them the way that they say it, then mm-hmm. they feel understood. So mm-hmm. that's what you that's what you want in your message is a, a message that people will feel understood and they will resonate with what you're saying. 
<laughs> you know, I have to I have to tell you a funny when I was I was interviewing people and I was really into my active listening and just listening, listening, listening. And I, I really would say words I would go, mmm, ah, or I would I said, wait a minute, you've got to be kidding. He did what? She did what? And they'd repeat this thing. So I you know, I I, I taped all my interviews, so I always had everything down verbatim. And when I would write them up, I could quote them directly. But it was a, blew me away, Ryan, that I would get postcards, you know, notes from these individuals I'd interviewed saying, I was the most fascinating person they'd ever done an interview with. I hardly said a frickin' word. I just <laughs> listened. <laughs> oh, that's great. Somebody, somebody told me once that, that God gave us two ears and one mouth for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that. <laughs> okay, uh, next up, next up. Ne- next up is a, a simple one of the, the second simple way to get into the mind of your reader. If you don't have a list of readers or, con- you know, like a group of them that you have already started to build a relationship with is that you can read what they're saying in other people's audiences. You can go to, one great way I love to do this is to go to Amazon and to find a book that's like mine that I'm going to write and start reading the reviews and seeing how people are reacting to certain points in the book. Um, that is such a great thing. You're going to, sometimes I even go straight to the worst reviews and I, I click on the like one-star reviews and I look at them and I say, well, what aren't they getting from this book? Oh, well, that's something I can include in my book. That's a, me- that's a, a message that's not getting um, fulfilled there. That, that's um, a home run idea, and I have suggested it several times to go to the one- and two-star reviews and look what people are grumbling about. And then when yeah. you write up your copy, um, make sure that you point out that that's included. It would be a good idea to include in your book, too. But that's included in your book <laughs> because people are obviously looking for it. Right. Right, 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 right. Um, and similarly, you can go to, um, you know, Facebook groups or, um, or, or a, lot of, a lot of authors have their own Facebook groups that they create from their readers. And, you know, if you can get into those, you can start to see, you know, what people, what common questions people are asking. And those are great places to start, you know, is oh, if you have a list of 10 questions, the book, you know, you can answer those 10 questions. Um, and, you know, and if you're doing fiction, it's it's a similar thing. It's not quite the same, but you you get what characters people are liking, and you get what um, you know plot twist people really like, and you start to build your own kind of map of what people are interested in. Um, and then, if you know any of these readers, the third and simple way to get into it's just to I mean, like you said get on the phone with them, get in front of them, get in an interview with them. So you can find any one of these people, whether it's in your own audience or someone else's, get a personal conversation going because that's going to oftentimes do a lot uh, more, it's going to be a lot more impactful than just reading about what that they've probably customized for a public audience. But when you get on the phone with them personally or uh, take them out to lunch, you start to, get a sense for who they are, and they start to, like you mentioned, those walls that we put. Um, they start to break on those walls, and you can get to the real heart of what's going on and what what core issue you need to speak to or what they really love in either fiction or whatever. So those are the three simple ways to get to the mind of your reader. And they're great. And, and I love simplicity. I think all of us appreciate it. Don't give me something I need a PhD or I have to go to the dictionary or Wikipedia to figure out what in the hell is going on. All right, so (laughs) next up is really the all-encompassing, the M word. So let's jump into that one. (laughs) Well, relationship three is marketing, and it really is kind of a big word, right? I mean, it's not the M word, Mm -hmm. marriage perhaps, but uh, it it sometimes (laughs) feels just as daunting to some people. (laughs) Um, oh, it's oh, it's more so. I I, I think um, authors are so marketing phobic um, for whatever reasons. You know, they'll say, "Well, I just want to be writing." Well, if you want to keep writing, you better learn how to market because no one's going to care. Uh, but yeah. it's marketing is critical, so take it and run with it, and give us your insights here. Yeah. So this is, I mean, this is the heart of you know. Oftentimes, people want to skip those first two, the the message 
and the mindset. I want to jump straight into marketing. Give me the give me the tactics. Give me the but if those other things aren't there, that your marketing is gonna your marketing is gonna really suck, to be honest. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. um, and marketing doesn't have to be scary. And here's here's how I look at it now. Um, the very first speaker at our summit last year's name was Tim Grawl, and he wrote a book called Your First Thousand Copies. And he mm-hmm. gives a different definition of marketing than I've ever heard. And marketing, he just says, is the relationship that you have with your audience. So. In this in this case, I'm going to say that marketing is the relationship that you have with your partners, your advertising partners, um, and, which is really the same thing because if you have a relationship with those partners, you're going to be able to have a good relationship with um, their audiences. So when you share with, um, uh, let's say I, I, I know another author who writes in my same genre, and mm-hmm. I approach the author, and they have an email list of a 1,000 people. And they have, a, they have built a relationship with those people over time. And so if, if they say to their audience, hey, you know, I write about zombie killers in wedding dresses, and, and there's this other guy who writes about vampire killers in wedding dresses, then um, he's going to lend his trust to my name, and they're going to trust me by virtue of trusting him. So... That's the cool thing about marketing is that when we build those relationships that we're talking about, um, it's not hard. It's it's asking somebody to to share your stuff, and um, so you know, let's get down to it. So there are a thousand, really a thousand ways to market your book. Every you know, every time I go online, and, and there's another new way to to market. And uh, but here are three of the most powerful things that I found, and that the speakers at the book marketing summit also made sure to talk about the first one of those things is to collect praise so this is it's really hard you mentioned that authors are are marketing phobic Judith, and that's because Mm -hmm. i think that we're scared to talk about ourselves right we're scared to say hey i'm so wonderful hey my book is so great hey these ideas really work and um you know there are people who really don't fit that mold and just kind of get in your face and talk about themselves all, all the time but that's not what we're talking about either so Collecting praise essentially bypasses that that I'm going to talk about myself thing. And you collect praise in the form of reviews, reviews for your book. You can send out advanced copies and get reviews, people to say, um, here's what I think about the book. You can go to influencers, people who have big audiences, and have them review your book, which is, I mean, it's a pretty similar process, but we call those endorsements. So those are... um, names that people are going to recognize so that, again, you borrow, you're borrowing that trust. And testimonials. If you're, if you're a business owner and you're um, coaching, any type of coach, and you've had some sort of program where you've taught people, you've had clients where you've done services for them, and you give them, um, they give you testimonials, that's a third type of praise, those are also part of this praise that we want to collect. So we have this kind of bucket of things that other people have said about us and that makes it a lot easier to like market your book because you don't have to say hey i'm so great you can say hey look at what so-and-so said about my book and all of a sudden you've got uh, this third party recommending it and uh if you watch infomercials you'll see Mm -hmm. that that, like part of that (laughs) part of that formula every time is somebody coming on saying hey this really worked for me i had this problem and now it's gone or um you know, having uh, a New York Times bestseller selling novelist uh, review my book and say that it was the book of the year. Wow, that's really cool. And it, it works for a reason because people want to know what other people think about what you're doing. And um, if it's not good, then they don't want to do it either. They, they want to bypass the risk of trying something new um, or wasting their time or wasting their money by listening to what other people have said about it. And you yourself are not always the most reliable person to to hear about that. So, from, from Well, I think that, they, yeah, probably we're the most unreliable. And I think that what you just said is, is really hot. And I hope that our listeners picked it up about paying attention to infomercials. Because if there is one key element that is always the kudos that come from a variety of different... Uh, two-legged and sometimes four-legged critters endorsing uh-huh. the product. And that somehow that the viewer thinks, oh, my God, 
They're talking to me. They're talking to me. I better call that 800 number right now. That's the purpose. Totally. totally. I like four legged <laughs> creatures. <laughs> totally. I love, I love this. <laughs> I, right, I've right. watched my share of infomercials. So. <laughs> I know. If you, if you ever, if you're an insomniac, you probably have their feel of late night TV, you know, infomercial type stuff. Yeah, um, they do. All right. So, you know what? We've got, we've got about 30 seconds to our next break. So here's what I like to do. I'm going to set it up because that the, the next point that uh, Ryan is going to hit on is the power of speaking. And, and I had the pleasure of uh, being one of his guest experts on how your mouth can move a million books, which is what I did. So we're going to come right back and, and get into that. And then in our final segment, we have 12 minutes after that. We're going to have to kind of wrap up the rest of it. So we'll be right back. It's Author You. Your guide to book publishing. My guest today is Ryan Mendenhall. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. book shepherding concept is simple. The publishing world is changing, and so must you. You need an experienced shepherd and a guide to partner with you as you create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve your publishing goals. You can't do it alone without paying the price. You can spend your money creating a book that turns out to be so-so, or you can create a book that looks and feels classy, builds your brand, and is a financial success, a bestseller. It's your choice. You choose. You need the book shepherd. Publishing is riddled with obstacles, sometimes nightmares for the author. You don't need problems, you want solutions. Dr. Judith Bryles will shepherd you through the maze and the chaos. At times, she's had to step in and rescue a book, a book that has been sabotaged by a publisher, or by a publishing service provider, or sometimes even the author themselves. Judith Bryles is the book shepherd if you want to create a book with no regrets. Give her a call today, 303 885-2207. That's 303-885-2207. Or email her at judith at bryles.com. By the way, bryles is spelled B-R-I-L-E-S. Follow Judith on Twitter at My Book Shepherd and on Facebook at The Book Shepherd. At Total Printing Systems, customer service is our priority. We are located in Southern Illinois. Our employees have an average of 18 years experience and know that customer relationships are important to our continued success. We have been a short run book printer for nearly 40 years and always stay at the forefront of technology. Our niche is from one to 5,000 copies. Today, we offer digital black and white and four color high-speed inkjet printing, a cost-effective way to introduce color into your short-run titles. We, of course, offer traditional offset printing as well. Bindery is done in-house, from adhesive case binding to PUR perfect binding to mechanical binding of all types, including side sewing. We provide warehousing, kitting, distribution, inventory management, a new print-on-demand facility, streaming browser-based eBooks, and bookstore. Call us at 1-800-465-5200 for a quote on your next book project. You can also visit our website at www.tps1.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book. If you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All right, I hope you've gotten some great tips on how you can kickstart. And and here's what the beauty of this is. I don't care if your book is brand new, fresh off the printing plate, or you have got cobwebs on some boxes in your garage or in the storage unit, that what Ryan Mendenhall 
is talking about is that you can really move books. So, Ryan, before we get into these last tips, why don't we tell them just just a little bitty bit about the Book Marketing Summit that you did last year and how they can tune into it and take advantage of what you're doing here. Yeah, great. Thanks for thanks for asking about that, Judith. I last year I just thought I was entering. Um, I've been in marketing for quite a while. I've worked for Disney and I've worked for companies like 3M and Little Giant Ladders and all kinds of stuff doing all kinds of digital marketing, search engine optimization and uh, pay-per-click management. Um, and, and I worked with one author kind of as a freelance project and just loved it. And I'm like, wow, that's what I want to do. So in my career change direction, I thought, let me start out this change with um, – a lot of good, you know, I want to get with the best. And so I, I reached out to all the all the people people were talking about in the book marketing space and, and I asked them to be on this summit where I they basically asked them, how would you sell a thousand books in 21 days? And we had some really good conversations. Um, and the, we ended up interviewing 27 people publicly. We interviewed two privately and those will come out this year at our, we're doing a mini summit. So um, you can uh, participate in that summit and get a copy, a really discounted copy of the past summit um, at, at uh, officecatapult.com forward slash celebration. And we're just celebrating the one-year anniversary of last year's summit, and we're including a couple new interviews and we're giving away a bunch of prizes. So if you haven't already been there yet, uh, come over and we'd love to – hand out some awesome book marketing prizes for you and uh, get you access to those old interviews that are really just still timely as well as the new ones. And, and, and you know, the, I think what I loved about it is that um, I've heard a lot of this stuff before. I, you know, I've been around for a while, but I've heard mm-hmm. of a lot of it before, but it, it, the value of rehearing things, you, you never can underestimate that reinforcement that comes along. So, you know, go back, re-listen, take advantage of all of this. All right, so, and the website they go to for this? Yes, authorscatapult.com uh, forward slash celebration. All right, officecatapult forward slash celebrations. Right. All right, there you go. All right, let's, let's get, now let's just jump back because we've got a lot to cover in our few minutes here. So members, money, what else is going on? Okay, so just to wrap up the marketing point, uh, you're getting praise from people, which is a key part of your marketing. You share those that praise in all your messages to, to your audience. And then you also, if you're starting early, like we mentioned in your mindset, one of the things you want to do is to start getting in front of targeted readers, getting partners. Um, one, one website that is kind of hard to get into, but uh, is, is an example of this. is called BookBub, B-O-O-K-B-U-B, and they yep. have a list yep. of readers that if you get accepted, they're going to share with, with a very genre-specific audience your book, and it boosts sales like nothing else. Um, oh, BookBub's but, fabulous, and, and we did yeah. a show with Nick Taylor on eBooks and brought book, the value of BookBub into awesome. that. I'll have to so, listen to that. That's a, I mean, it's a coveted yeah. place to be. Um, similarly, though, getting in front of targeted readers, building those partnerships is, came up again and again as those relationships to build. And then, like you mentioned before the, before the break, speaking often to groups of targeted readers. Um, when you, when we, we have uh, in, our, in the publishing house I'm working with, we have authors that go on book tours at, to schools and they inevitably sell a bunch of books at every school. And when you go to an audience to speak on your topic or, uh, or, or about your book, um, you're going to sell, you're going to sell books. Uh, and, and that's an always, I'm telling everyone it's a given when you open your, I mean, I had formulas down even the time of day and even the location. And, and if, if people were, if I was at a convention um, and I, I think I shared that with Suzuki. If I was a convention, I knew that our book sales would be at least doubled because everyone had their credit card. There is just all kinds of goodies out there that one can do. So awesome! Yeah, get a list from Judith because that's that's her expertise, and that's she and a few others really opened up my eyes to speak what speaking could do for your book sales. 
it it is the truth. Okay, so (laughs) I I live by, listen, everyone, I sold a million copies of my books by opening my mouth and reaching out. So if I can do it, so can you. Oh, that's beautiful. I'm just going to say that right up front. All right, so next up. All right, relationship number four is your members. So once you've, um, basically, to take, people who have heard your message, so people who are perusing your message, and to get them closer into a more solidified relationship. I call them, I call those people who have opted into your list or have joined your membership site or joined your Facebook group or, or whatever. I call them your members because they now have some sort of, they've given you something. They've given you their email address or their contact information, and you now started a relationship. And so to those members, mm-hmm. Every author that treats their book publishing like a business is going to have at least three things that are key to, to prizing, valuing, and increasing value for their members. And that's one, an email list, two, a blog, and three, a social presence. And again, like I said, I was really surprised when I listened to the speakers at the Book Marketing Summit share that there are foundational things that everyone talks about that very few people do and they try to do, you know, I, somebody might go to a book club before they put up a blog or um, start building an email list, but that's the wrong thing to do. And um, building an email list, having a blog and a social presence, and then um, for your members to continually hear from you is really critical. Don't write a book. Uh, get everyone excited and then go dormant for another six months to a year while you write your next book and then come out and, and write your next blog post. It's not, it's not um, helpful to keep people connected. So that's the it, key essence with your members. Uh, do you have anything you know, to say about it? It amazes me, Ryan, that I, 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 that is more common than not that they they go dormant and they 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 just there's either I think you know, there's something missing in the author DNA here or something that they don't realize how critical it is to stay connected um, and and I know that one of the things that we're doing and that we have a very large author the author you community on LinkedIn is, is close to 12,500 members right now and we are we have created actually a special category within author you that we are announcing over this weekend and doing massive blasts on that uh, called the basic free category to get them over. So because as LinkedIn, you know, you don't know their emails to bring them over because I have members all over the world, all over the world that we would like to engage them in our community and bring them in more and more because they have no idea what we're doing here in land. They all think it's just cyber. So. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's another good thing you mentioned about members is that you get get close to them, and it's really hard to get really, really close digitally. So you know, having offline events that they can participate in and meet each other and have a support network, that's really what people are looking for is a place to belong and others who believe like they do. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah, that's, that's a good value to add to your members for sure. Mm-hmm. And, okay. And the last, the last relationship is – with your money, authors who are ah, mindful of their money. <laughs> of their money and how it comes in will find that more comes in, and that it minds them as well when when it comes in. So people um, who who do that, who pay attention to this relationship of, of money, see, money is essentially just the trust that people have given to you. That's it's a evidence of the trust that they've give, that they've given to you, and. Um, so that should be sacred. I consider that sacred. Um, sometimes we take money and we don't don't deliver on a promise, and we got to make sure that we do that. But here are three concepts to mind, <laughs> to mind, uh, or I guess I call them money systems. That if making money as an author is important to you, and uh, then then you need to uh, here to these. The first one is making sure that you have calls to action. You're actually inviting people. So when you have your message out there in a lot of places, you need to say, hey, so I'm going to give you an example. Hey, guys, come on over to our book marketing summit this year. We're giving away a lot of prizes, and you're going to, have, you're going to meet some other people like you, and you're going to learn how to sell a, do a book launch to sell 1,000 books in 21 days. 
you can get there at authorscatapult.com forward slash celebration. So have those calls to action wherever you have your message or people won't buy stuff from you. <laughs> they can't because mm-hmm. you yeah, don't give exactly. them the opportunity. Yeah. So that, that is a really simple system, but it's a system nonetheless. But every time you share your message, you invite somebody to come closer to you. Yep. Okay. And then number two? Number two. I figured there's got to be a number two. <laughs> there is a number two and a number three. So number two is every time somebody buys something from you, offer them an upsell. Just say, you know, you really like that. You might like this too. Um, it might be a product that's similar to it, or it might be something that goes in, that dives in deeper. If you're a fiction author, you might uh, offer them other books. Say, hey, thanks for buying this book. Would you like to uh, come get this other book for 25% off for my way of saying thank you um, for buying this book? Um, upsells, are, they really increase sales. And it's uh, any big uh, site you see is going to have these, these things where they try to sell you more things um, GoDaddy is the most annoying example of that, but it works. That's why they do it. Um, Mm -hmm. And the last thing is that that the fortune is really in the follow-up. So, you know, people are busy. Don't assume that everyone who you send an email to is going to open it, is waiting there at their computer for you to open it up or waiting by the phone for you to call. So, you know, send out multiple messages so that people can – take advantage of the things that you're offering. Sometimes they're just busy. They don't see it. Uh, and emails can go to junk mail. And uh, I, I experienced it in this summit. I just followed up with a couple of people that I hadn't heard from, and they said, oh, yeah, I hadn't seen your message yet. I'd love to participate. So Yeah, I know. Different. And you know what? I was one of those people because I get 500 emails a day. So things get lost. Maybe All right. Not. Yeah, and I, and I hate to do this to you, but we are actually out of time on this. So I, I think that it would, be, I'd love to have you come back again and we really focus on a deep dive and then segment out your, the blueprint type of launch that is so Great. critical for marketing. Would you do that? I would love to. And that's, you know, if you guys Great. come to the summit, those are, that's what you're going to get. Perfect. Some of those. All right. Lovely. All right. This is Judith Riles. It's author you, your guide to book publishing. And thank you to Ryan Mendenhall for being our guest today. Thank you for being a part of your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Each week, a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take you, the author, to the next level. You'll learn tips and secrets on how to create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve book publishing success by making one very simple change in your book's journey. How to avoid the publishing predators. How to create an author and book platform that rocks. Learn how to make a living with your words and your books. Learn how to publish a book that has no regrets and so much more. For more information, check out AuthorU.org, where authors who want to be seriously successful go. And Judith's website, TheBookShepherd.com. Then join us again here next week for more. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Brought to you by Author You and the Book Shepherd. Thursday evenings at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific on the Rockstar Radio Network.